there's some kind of connection, some kind of an amazing connection between hunters and the animals they pursue that's just like so deep in your soul that you want to be a part of making the landscape better for those animals. The experience of going out there in the morning. All of a sudden you're hearing whistling wings and then the birds start coming in you say, get that. And you start making that call. Two favorite words in my life. Take them. Oh! <laughs> Get it. You know, a lot of people have asked me all the time, why? Why do I love duck hunting more than I love the others? And for me, it's, a, it's like the dance. You're calling to try and see if they'll come dance with you. We're a bunch of determined individuals and we push for wetland conservation. It is our passion. Get them. Well done! Right! To see them cut, dip, and weave. The seeing those ducks decoy and seeing that acrobatic moves in the air is just it's something you, I never get tired of. It was like the epitome of puddle of honey. To watch the birds work is the real objective of the hunt. Ducks Unlimited Television is presented by Drake Waterfowl Systems, innovators in waterfowl hunting. Greetings, I'm Betsy Noble for Ducks Unlimited TV. Stop everything and prepare to see incredible footage from maybe the number one mallard destination in all the world. This is a throwback show in gorgeous Montana with Doug Larson and former DU TV host Mark Pierce and Jared Brown. All up next on DU TV. Just to see this state is a blessing. And I understand now the line in the song, Purple Mountain's Majesty. I mean, this is where the Purple Mountains are. You know, we were fortunate to be able to, you know, get out, not quite in the dark. We were able to, the way the conditions were, you know, we didn't have to be there at first light. Uh, most mornings we were getting up with the sun. So Doug, Jared been here before, but there's a little spring right here ahead of us. This water's coming out of the ground at 50 something degrees. Oh. So it's sort of like a little hot tub. <laughs> and with these temperatures, these birds are just piled into this warm water. Into hot water. Yeah. The idea is for us to just kind of bump them off, quickly get decoys out, and hopefully they'll come back. Perfect. You know how that goes. Sometimes oh, they yeah, don't come but, back. I mean, <laughs> that looks to me like we're probably in pretty good shape. I think we're in great shape. <laughs> yeah, I think and you've been you know here what? before, you know we're in great I'll shape. I promise you right now, I guarantee you there's more than 10 or 20 ducks on that. Jared's, right. Jared's the optimist. I'm always the pessimist of what <laughs> could go wrong, you know. And the only thing that could go wrong today is sometimes when it gets so cold, they'll just go to the refuge which adjoins this property and just sit. So we gotta hope that doesn't happen, that they trickle back. Oh, it's yeah, supposed to warm up as the day wears on, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah I think we'll be all right. So I let's, think we're gonna be just let's fine. Let's go see if we can make the dog happy. Let's do it. Wow. I like our chances. Bro. Yeah, I think this spot has potential. <laughs> it was black when those birds got up off the water. Let's wait and not shoot into this whole mess. I was gonna let's say, kinda, you know, just shoot let's numbers. Kinda let these guys clear and then we'll look for singles again. When it started, it started in earnest. We're very strategic about where we hunt so we don't you know, right. put too much pressure on them. We're not shooting into the big flocks, We're trying to kind of work on the edges, shoot singles and pairs. That will just pay such dividends. You know, you'll keep your hunting great for not just today and not just tomorrow, but you know, another week or through the season. You can hold ducks a long time if you give them a little break. Oh, here's two really low ones. Drake, Drake on, on the left. Drake, left. Drake on the right. Drake on the right. Jared and Jared. There we go. That's that. Give us some on that, brother. Woo! Nothing like it. Shooting greenheads in the snow. Yeah, baby. It was Disneyland for duck hunters out there this morning. I mean, green heads with snow in the background is you know, one of my favorite parts about being a duck hunter in Montana, and it happened big time this morning. My Ducks Unlimited journey started back in the early 1980s. Shoot him, Doug. My dad and I had a little wood carving business called Big Sky Carvers. Ooh. 
We're going to have to raise your level of difficulty. It doesn't though. get a lot easier than that, <laughs> fellas. Ted. And we sold a couple of decoys into the national banquet package at Ducks Unlimited. It was the biggest thing that had ever happened to us. Like, we were passive supporters of Ducks Unlimited. We were members, and we went to an event occasionally, but we weren't really pressed in. But that year, we went to Ducks Unlimited's national convention. I'll never forget. It was in uh, Vancouver, British Columbia. And we heard all the speeches, and we saw the impact that Ducks Unlimited was having on the continent and the passion from the volunteers and the passion from the staff. And we were forever changed. One of the things that I really gained from my experience as a senior volunteer at Ducks Unlimited and then ultimately a television host is I really got to see behind the curtain of how does this organization work? What are they doing? What are they doing with their money? And so often it's been my experience in life when you see behind the curtain, you see what the wizard's doing and it's maybe not quite as good as you were hoping. And that absolutely wasn't and isn't the case with Ducks Unlimited. The more I learn about what the organization does, the more excited I became and the more committed I became to Ducks Unlimited's mission. Ducks Unlimited Television is presented by Drake Waterfowl Systems, innovators in waterfowl hunting. Mossy Oak Shadow Grass Habitat, the official camo of Ducks Unlimited. Browning Firearms, the best there is. Native Nurseries, hand-selected, hand-grown plants for wildlife. Higdon Outdoors, quality, customer service, innovation, that's Higdon. And Ducks Unlimited's 85th anniversary, celebrating 85 years as North America's leader in wetlands conservation. I was on Ducks Unlimited's board of directors. I want to say it was late 80s, 88, 89, something like that. And we decided as a board to launch a Ducks Unlimited television show. And there weren't many hunting shows out there at that time. There was only six or eight or ten. So the world of Ducks Unlimited, as it was initially called, was born. A classic mallard hunt in the flooded timber of Arkansas. This week, on the world of Ducks Unlimited. The one thing I learned on this trip with these two guys is their, their personalities and their friendship, what you saw on DUTV, was literally the tip of the iceberg. When the opportunity came for a, a new co-host, when Orrin stepped down. At that time, the CEO goes, you need to meet another younger guy, so this guy named Mark Pierce. And I will tell you this, a half a beer later, we were best friends. Oh my gosh, Jared and I traveling around the country, hunting together and yucking it up as, you know, closest brothers. Uh, it was the time of our lives. When you jump in a blind with guys who do this every day, who know how to call, who know how to shoot, you know, the energy, the vibe level was, was super high. It's all you, JB. Yeah. With Jared, it's almost always off the walls. You almost have to work to vibe him down just a notch. Knew that duck was in big trouble. Jared and I, we, we're, we're pretty good yin to each other's yang. Two for two, right, baby. Two for two. I'm mostly fairly calm and, you know, kind of level about things. And I have a little bit more of an amped up personality. It's time to let it happen, Captain. Mm -hmm. Jared's just, man, he is turned on high all the time. Come on, man. Yeah, baby. For a silver haired man of 63, I don't know that he has an off button, he just goes. Oh, this uh, fires me up. I hunt with young guys all the time, and Jared will be the most excited guy. He'll be more excited than any dog you ever bring out there. By the time you get here, brother, we were like jog. Hurry up and run. They are coming in, Mark. You had us whimpering like a dog. Yeah. <laughs> Hurry up, Mark. I, I think I'm still a kid out there in that duck blind. I shot my duck. <laughs> it's awesome. I don't want to go home. And he's excited, every hunt's gonna be amazing, every day is gonna be amazing, everyone we meet is amazing. He's also probably the most hardcore duck hunter I've ever met. When you're born in South Louisiana, I think you come out of mama with a pocket fisherman and a BB gun. He's one of a kind. Did I not tell you I guarantee Yep. Not this one. <laughs> well, I didn't understand what you're talking about because you're the only guy I know that spells guarantee with an O. You got it. Guarantee. I start getting around my Kagan boys in South Louisiana. I start talking like that. Come on, man. <laughs> yeah, man. As Ducks Unlimited Television celebrates its milestone 26th season, 
We want to take a moment to thank all the volunteers and staff who've taken this show from a mere idea to on-site reality across the decades. There's no way DUTV cameras could entertain and educate without the people willing to do the work and tell the stories that separate us from all of the other outdoor programs. Over the years, show hosts and sponsors have changed, but that happens on a program that's been around as long as this one has. What has remained is DU Television's commitment to bringing viewers unique waterfowling adventures across North America, while also highlighting DU's conservation mission. What also remains is the people willing to brave the elements and the unpredictable waterfowl behavior to bring this show to you. A special thanks goes out to former DU Television co-hosts Mark Pierce and Jared Brown. They gladly stepped up and gave their time to make this show a big success early on. With larger than life personalities and hunting prowess and a passion for DU, they transformed this from being just another outdoor show into the incredible experience that DU-TV is today. To enjoy DU-TV episodes throughout the years, the unique stories and thrilling hunts that they involve, please visit our website at ducks.org. DU Insights is brought to you by Mossy Oak Properties. Find your favorite place at mossyoakproperties.com. Mark and Jared and I are all roughly the same age and I think we all roughly came you know, into DU's community about the same time. I came into the magazine in the early 2000s about the time that, that Mark and Jared really were, you know, starting with the TV show. So, you know, I was able to, to write for the magazine, write some features, and, you know, I wrote a couple of books in the early 2000s, and, uh, and I watched their career as they, pro you know, progressed through, through DU TV. And, you know, I became immediately drawn to it because, you know, I thought, you know, these were my people. These are the people that are out there doing what I would love to do. You know, I had one style of duck hunting, which was, you know, hunting potholes at home for two or three species of ducks. And, and I was fascinated to know that there were people that, you know, shot blue winged teal that had, you know, the blue on their head and the white crest. I mean, I never saw that up, you know, the northern end of the flyway. Look at this Look at guy. that guy pull the wrist cord. Look at this acre Oh! <laughs> I didn't want to shoot him that close, no. you know. That sea duck hunting is so unique. It's so funny. But so the different. first words that, it, that come out of my mouth were going to be like sea duck hunting. Yeah. Like the stuff that you'd never thought you would ever see. No. You would ever do. I am jacked up. Uh, never shot one. Really? Never seen one. It'll be good. Let's go. If you take something that's so familiar, you know, ducks that you've seen yeah. all your life, and here's a species that you know, you've only seen in a picture book, you know, a long tail with a big, long spike on it or those big white eiders. I mean, it, it's magical. Yeah, right here. Low on the deck. I'll always remember the excitement of that first sea duck hunt. It's the people, the volunteers, it's the donors, and that interaction and the passion. You go, wow, we're the same. You're yeah. just here in California or you're here in Ohio, but we all love what we're doing. This, this, these birds right above us right now are coming in the decoys. There's nothing that fires me up. Two words. Take them. Mm. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I remember an episode where you were trying to convince some poor Midwestern guy. There goes a coot right along there. To eat coot gizzard. Well, we, we call those down in the south pool dude. Are they good eating? Well, they're gizzards, though. They have a gizzard about the size of a man's fist, and uh, you quarter that up. We'll yeah, take your yeah. word for it. <laughs> and he looked at you like you had just <laughs> dropped in from another planet. Hot sauce and a oh, little yeah. uh, cure spices. A lot of things. You can about make anything good. I tell you, nothing like it, guys. Greenheads in the greenheads in the snow. Welcome to Montana. Good. Thank you, man. It's, <laughs> I feel like I'm hunting with old friends. I've been watching you guys for so I watch you guys for so long. I like these are my guys. I I love the culture so much because there's so much more ability to present things that you can't necessarily present 
you know, on the printed page. To be able to show feelings, to be able to show emotion. And boy, if you're not a hardcore believer when you start, you are when you finish, right? You know, I, I think about the, the French term, no, noblesse oblige, the noble obligation. And that's, I think, what you see with these volunteers. I'm shocked, not only about how good the hunting can be, but how hard they work yeah. outside the hunting season yeah. to make sure they've got the water right and the food right and the ducks right. And it's just, it's so heartwarming and it's uniform, yeah. no matter where you go in the country, to see that kind of work ethic among people that really care about this stuff. Yeah. Cold weather, spring conditions go hand in hand with waterfowling. We all know about that. Misery loves company. So how do we get our dog ready for the stress of cold water conditions? High wind, snow, ice, it's gonna take some preparation, so let's take a look. First consider the dog's body weight and the nutrition being provided. Fat is energy. It's the fuel for performance and warmth. So we select a performance grade food like Perina Pro Plan 3020. A second consideration will be how to keep the dog high and dry on the hunt. Here a water stand gets the dog well out of the water and it's a good idea to block the wind also in either in the blind or dog hide. How long will keep a dog out on a difficult retrieve exposed to extreme cold must be considered. Here I'm using a thermal vest to maintain body temperature on cold water hunts. You can actually feel the positive effects. It's a wetsuit. In really icy conditions, I'm gonna watch for ice buildup on these pads in the hair. It's a good idea to keep this hair trimmed when you're gonna work in icy conditions. Also, we're gonna pre-expose our gun dog to cold weather conditions, especially cold water, before the hunt when traveling from warmer climates or from the dog living indoors. Extreme changes in temperature can be a shock. Ah, we waterfowlers know how to gear up for foul weather. So some consideration should be given for our gun dogs as well. It's an ounce of prevention. Duck Dog with Mike Stewart is presented by Purina Pro Plan, nutrition that performs. DUTV is powered by Browning Ammunition, the best there is. Biologic, scientifically proven wildlife products. Purina Pro Plan, nutrition that performs. Tetra Hearing, more than hearing protection, it's hearing perfection. Mossy Oak Properties, America's land specialist. Zinc Calls, a champion in every call. Closed captioning for Ducks Unlimited Television is brought to you by Mossy Oak Bottomland, the official timber pattern of Ducks Unlimited. I don't know whether it's my cultural rearing in South Louisiana. Here's your goose, here's your goose. Or it's my love of being able to go outdoors and sit in a Get barn. Get this fly over. Shoot him, Doug. Take him, Doug. Nice. That is what they used to call in the South, coloring up the strap. Every morning, I know I'm going to see something different that I haven't seen in, now it's 50 something years. Being out there this morning and refining that chemistry that I have with Jared. One of these boys is going to come see us. Feeling that same kinship with Doug. Not just because the hunting was good, but because we're like-minded and we have the same energy around this thing that we love so much, being duck hunting and Ducks Unlimited. Actually, let's get multiples here. Shoot them. Right, let's go. Three down! Woo! Give me some on that, big man! That's what I'm talking about! It was just a a great and almost a little emotional Check. reminder to me of what Ducks Unlimited and DUTV has meant in my life. Good man. Uh, my father has a saying in life, and he basically says, to those as much has been given, much is expected. I kind of use that in the same parallel is to those of us that enjoy this great outdoors Baby Drake, and enjoy job. hunting and harvesting this game, there's an obligation that we need to give back and keep these resources for future generations. To know that maybe I contributed a little bit along the way to Ducks Unlimited TV means so much to me. And 
parallel to that would be the friendships. You know, Jared Brown and numbers of other people that I met along the way, DU volunteers and staff that became some of my dearest friends in that little window of time. It's so much more than shooting ducks. Ducks Unlimited is about protection, is about restoration. And I want to impress okay. upon my kids, just like my grandfather did years ago on me, there is a great urgency that we keep these wetlands and associated habitats intact. As the world grows and cities grow and the land changes, it's gonna take even more passion just to make sure that the stuff that's natural, the, the amazing biodiversity that we get to experience in the state is still here. The Ducks Unlimited sets go. an extremely high bar for tens of thousands of people coming together for is. a common cause, volunteers, there's nothing in it for them. Food for the winter, fellas. That to put pieces in place that leave a lasting impact on our continent. That's pretty amazing. Three words, unbelievable. So much so we couldn't fit all the action into one episode. Next week, we join Mark's son, Bridger, one of the top young TV executives at work today for a second act from this famed venue. Until we meet again, thanks for supporting Ducks Unlimited, Wetlands and Waterfowl Conservation, and tuning in to DUTV. I truly, yeah, I truly didn't, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's always, be, it's always, I'm just a happy worker in the Greenhead Factory. Yeah, we got that. <laughs> Easy job. <laughs>